So actually what I'm talking about today is designing the future workplace. So my name is Matthew Bates and I'm a director of professional, design director of professional products and design partners in, uh, in Bray. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about who we are, how we work, how we approach designing the future workplaces. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples uh, of that, including a new product we're telling you today called Hexer. Um, in terms of manufacturing, myself, I grew up on the Chief Head Peninsula in West Cork, you know, and, and part of my upbringing, part, part of my upbringing was uh, uh, involved in a family-run business, uh, making making farmhouse cheese. So I'm, I'm quite familiar with the notion of having to and the ability to grow, build, sustain uh, a manufacturing. Uh, organization, small as it, as it is, and, uh, as it was at the time, um, still used to dealing with all sorts of stakeholders in the value chain. Nothing better? Any better? Yeah? I can't move my head now. Okay. So, um, so involved, you know, part of the involvement in this industry, you know, there was, I was dealing with manufacturers, I was dealing with sales, marketing, uh, distributors, all sorts of people, stakeholders in the value chain. And uh, change was inevitable in, in the industry, as it is with, ev with every kind of industry. So I was working with, uh, you know, we were working with the likes of uh, ever-changing milk prices, climate change, different types of uh, uh, you know, animal behavior. There's a lot of change happening the whole time. So I'm used to change. And uh, I guess when I went to college, I studied industrial design. And now, um, since then, I have over 20 years experience in designing consumer, medical, and professional products uh, for multinationals and for um, uh, startups, both in Ireland and abroad. So now, um, in Design Partners, uh, we're a strategic design consultancy. We've been based in Bray, uh, in County Wicklow, for over 30 years. And we've been designing best-selling and award-winning product experiences over that time. Um, our mission there is to work with really ambitious clients, again, whether they're startups or whether they're multinationals, who believe design is central to driving growth and innovation. So it's a core fundamental principle for us. And uh, we live at the intersection of both the physical and the digital. So that means we are familiar with designing the artifact uh, and also any mobile application, software, digital experience as part of that, as well as any other experience in that ecosystem. So that intersection of digital and physical is really where our focus is. And to do, and to do that, uh, we've grown our team over the last 30 years. So our core team were, it was, is and was in industrial design, and we've developed an interaction design team. We've developed uh, a UX team, ethnographic research, mechanical engineering, human factors engineering. We have extensive workshops for prototyping, and we also work with roadmap and brand strategy. So we have a comprehensive team that allows us address any kind of issue. We custom built a new studio two years ago, and uh, the new studio is over three floors. Uh, it's completely designed around the way we work. So we have a creative studio on the top floor uh, with breakout spaces and meeting rooms where we encourage our clients to come get away from the rigor and the mundane, mundane nature of their everyday work, to come and think strategically about their future, about what kind of products fit into that strategy. Um, we also have uh, extensive workshops, as I mentioned downstairs. Now, our focus is on three categories, consumer electronics, medical healthcare products, and what we call professional products, which I'll elaborate on. And our philosophy is really about um, this balance of thinking and doing. So the idea of uh, ensuring that we're tuned into the business and the brand context of, of your company, forming a strategy, and then creating actionable, implementable solutions that fit to that strategy. So it's really that balance of thinking and doing, making sure that you can action and build your company quickly. So I, I'm at the moment, I'm leading the professional category. And this is designing for experts. So this is for industrial applications, commercial applications, and professional kind of scenarios where high performance is required. 
Uh, we've designed, what we strive to do is, is design iconic tools and workflows for those kind of applications. Uh, and our approach is very human-centric uh, in relation to that. So uh, you may ask why design is relevant to the future workplace. So design is often considered an abstract thing, and people find it hard to relate to it. It's, it's, um, it's a little intangible for some, but actually it's quite simple. Design starts and finishes with people and your users, and uh, that's really what we're focused on. It's a human-centric approach. Um, it's easy to kind of get caught up and lost in technology. There's so much happening at the moment. There's so much smart, connected. The IoT is affecting everyone. There's lots of potential, but if you start and finish with people, then you know what technology to apply. That's really important that we do that. So we, we really believe in, in creating these meaningful connections with our users and other stakeholders in the value chain. And uh, all our approach is around that. Um, I just want to give you an maybe a couple of examples of work we've done uh, that, that sort of feed into that principle. Uh, one is for Tamra, who some of you may be aware of. They're a multinational organization that are expertise uh, experts in sorting, sorting machines in the mining industry, the recycling industry, and the food industry. And these are huge machines that uh, basically filter out what you don't want from what you do want. Um, they're conveyor belt systems and they're in pretty extreme environments. So they're probably the global leader in sorting machines. And um, their mission is to kind of optimize the world's resources. So they approached us to, uh, um, to, to redesign their UIs. Basically, there's all sorts of machines across all sorts of sectors, and every, every single one of them had a very different machine interface on them. And we were tasked to design a UI that worked across it. Now our starting point, sorry, um, the, uh, the user interface is a pretty critical inter uh, section of um, one of these machines. It's, it's basically the control point. It's the point where if the machine goes down and you're responsible for it, then the factory and the income starts to suffer. So the interface is a very, very important part of the tool. And uh, when we looked and reviewed during the research uh, these interfaces, we realized that all that responsibility on operators was uh, a pretty big one for them to take on, considering the interface was so poor. So, um, what we had to do, uh, and we do this as vital stage for us at the start of every project, is to what we call tune in. Uh, we tune in to the task that's being required, whatever the project, we tune into the environments in which that task is being done, and we tune into the users. Now, in this case, we visited six countries and 13 different facilities, ranging from, uh, as I said, mining to recycling to, to agricultural sorting. And we soon found that it was actually, if we could affect the operators, then we'd build the most efficiency into this solution. So we, what, what started off as a kind of a redesign, we realized that actually it's the whole rethinking of the whole philosophy, because it didn't reflect anything to do with the brand, it wasn't future-proof for, for forward iterations, and we realized we had to create a whole kind of language, uh, a UI language for this. And um, you know, during the research, there's always insights come out that inform our design. And I, still, I suppose one of the examples of the, the uh, insights that we got in this case was this notion of at a glance. So this was at a potato sorting factory where um, we, we realized these machines are moving very fast. There was a blockage and the, the lady on the right had to move over to the machine in the far distance, unblock it, but she had to be able to look back at the screen. And there was commotion and movement and there was heads in the way. So this notion of being able to see it, instant critical data from a distance became a really guiding principle for the design. So a very human-centric need that informed how we designed it. So this is an example of one of the interfaces before, which is, uh, as you can see, it's pretty rudimentary. There's no hierarchy. You're not really sure what you're looking at. It can control anything. 
And um, one of the screen graphs from what the outcome was, was this, this new experience where it's very glanceable. You could see what feeds were coming in, what was pure, what was uh, alien, and uh, what was um, questionable. And you could read this from a distance very, very quickly. So you're focusing on the very uh, uh, the, the important things to optimize productivity. So, um, now this has been very successful. successful. It's rolled out as a full design language for Tomra, and they're using it uh, in ways to develop new programs for new machines constantly. So the next example I'm going to talk about is uh, a new product we've been working on called Hexa. Um, but before I show you that, I just want to show you a quick video. So this is a colleague of mine, uh, Ben. We got to work, uh, experiment with the Microsoft HoloLens, an amazing technology, and uh, in its infancy in terms of user experience, but there is a lot of potential there. And uh, what you'll notice about Ben here is he's totally immersed in the experience. It's a fascinating experience. If you ever try it, you should. You should. Um, loads and loads of potential. But you'll notice that he's totally immersed in it. He can see the surrounding environment, but he can't, he's not, he's not really engaged in it. As a result, he's unaware of furniture, he's unaware of things that are happening. It's, it's actually a safety hazard. So what we said about thinking was, how can we use augmented realities to create a meaningful safety solution rather than it being a kind of a hindrance to safety? And we came up with this idea of Pink Hexa, which is a sixth sense for construction workers, if you like. Um, so it's this idea of using augmented realities to make you a superhuman worker in many ways. Um, so basically this is the next generation ear defenders for construction workers. And uh, it comprises of a semi-rigid collar that sits around your neck, unlike this, which is very uncomfortable. Um, and in it are removable magnetic cord, uh, ear defender cords that fit into your ears. Now the idea is that um, within, the, uh, within that structure you've got a series of sensors and particle sensors uh, and um, charging points to make it so that houses the whole electronic circuitry. And this is basically monitoring the environment as well as protecting your ears in the traditional sense. And it's giving you uh, audible feedback as opposed to visual. So augmented reality is not just a visual. We're interested in exploring the other senses. And when it comes to a safety situation in an industrial application, then we think, we think ears are a natural interface for that. So as it's monitoring methane, chlorine, uh, dust particles, it can feed you back warnings. It's got an SpO2 monitor and so that it can also feed back when you're getting tired. So these are very, very tangible uh, and, and effective feedback cycles that you can get back through the, through the device. And then there's features such as adaptive sound filtering. So this is technology taken from uh, traditional um, uh, sorry, um, ear, when you're poor hearing, sorry, my word's gone. Um, so it, basically what we're doing is we're filtering out the sounds that are damaging and we're enhancing the sound that you do want to hear, which is communication. So it's adaptive sound filtering. It's got this environmental monitor, monitor which is monitoring gas sensors, particle sensors, and so on, and giving that feedback for the last few years. And then there's a lifeline uh, element to it as well, which in terms of if there's an accident you fall, it's intelligent enough to send a message to your colleagues. And the idea is this is a personal device you can wear and carry. And uh, obviously the earpiece has got the necessary technology to fit comfortably in your ear. So I move it quickly to the time. So this idea of superhuman workers is something we're very interested in. Using augmented reality in, in appropriate, intelligent ways to make us more productive, to make us more efficient. So if you're interested in hearing more about Hexa, about Tama, or about anything else we do, we're at Stand 68, which is just the other side of the wall here, and we'd be welcome to talk to you. Thank you very much for your attention.